Are you ready for some fun on the beach and visit some lighthouses? I'll guide you through one of the best places to do just that. Jutting way out into the Atlantic is a narrow strip of land known as the Outer Banks. On one side of this narrow strip is the sometimes angry Atlantic Ocean. On the other side is the calm sound. These barrier islands take the brunt of the Atlantic storms and protect the mainland. Cape Hatteras National Seashore preserves 70 miles of the Outer Banks, from Whalebone Junction to Ocracoke. The northern end starts at the junction of US 64-264 and NC-12, which runs the length of the park. It starts at Bodie Island, crosses Oregon Inland to Hatteras Island, through the Pea Island National Wildlife Refuge, past several small towns, the Cape Hatteras Light Station, to the town of Hatteras. This is where Highway 12 ends. To get to the rest of the National Seashore, take the ferry across Hatteras Inlet to Ocracoke Island, Ocracoke and the Ocracoke Lighthouse. There are ferries to the mainland from Ocracoke that takes about two and a half hours. Highway 12 is a beautiful drive, but it's a slow drive. It's nestled between the dunes of the Atlantic side and the shallow waters of the Sound side. At its narrowest point, it's only 150 yards wide, near the holdover day use area. Just imagine, a mere one and a half football fields separate the Sound from the ocean. Cape Hatteras National Seashore was the first national seashore in America, established in 1953. The minimum time you should have for a visit is half a day, but it would be hard to include Ocracoke Island and only allow limited time at the lighthouses. A full day allows a more leisurely pace, with time on the beach, browsing the stores at the small quaint towns, and ample time at the lighthouses and time for the ferry to get to Ocracook Island. To enjoy the full experience, spend one night at one of the towns or campsites. This gives you time to observe wildlife at dusk or dawn. What can you do at Cape Hatteras? There are three main activities. The beach, the lighthouse, and the wildlife. The long stretch of fine sandy beach with no nearby development provides uncrowded beach. You can go for a walk on the beach for miles. Or, if you prefer, drive right on the beach with off-road vehicles with a permit, which costs $50. The permit is available online. Depending on the season, the routes and the times may vary. To protect nesting turtles and birds, routes may be closed on short notice. Of course, you can just relax on the beach build sandcastles, and swim in the ocean. However, be careful of strong currents and waves. Try to swim at the beaches with lifeguards, which is available in the summertime at certain locations. Want to tell ghost stories by a campfire with sounds of the ocean in the background right on the beach? You can do just that throughout the park in the wintertime and some sections during the summer. A free permit is required that can be obtained online. Check the park website for details. There are four campgrounds in the park. They're not on the beach, but behind sand dunes. Tent and RV camping are available. There are three lighthouses in the park. The Bodie Island Light Station on the north side, the Cape Hatteras Light Station in the middle, and the Ocracoke Light Station on the southern end. The Bodie Island and the Cape Hatteras Lighthouses are open during the summer for climbing. Bodie Island Lighthouse is a self-paced climb. Tickets cost $10 for adults and goes on sale online at 7 a.m. for that day. The climb is over 200 steps, equal to a 10-story building. We're on Bodie Island, and that's the Bodie Lighthouse right there. There's a nice boardwalk that goes through the swamp that gets you, I presume, to the water. Very nice boardwalk leads you up to that lookout point over there. And you see all these thick marsh. And according to the sign, there's venom and snakes in there. So better be careful. Don't go in there.
Bodie Island Lighthouse has a troubled history. The current lighthouse is a third iteration. The first one was built in 1847, but due to a poor foundation, the 54-foot lighthouse began to lean within two years and had to be abandoned in 1859. The second lighthouse was built in 1859, but the Confederate troops blew it up in 1861 during the Civil War. The third and the current lighthouse is on the other side of the Oregon Inlet from the original, built on 15 acres that was purchased for only $150. It was completed in 1872. The lighthouse was turned over to the National Park Service in 1953 and was restored in 2013. Cape Hatteras Lighthouse is usually open during the summer for climbing, but in 2021, due to restoration work, availability varies. It's best to check the park website for the current information. To climb the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse when it's open, you need to purchase tickets, which is $8 for adults, and can only be purchased on site on the day of the climb. The climb opens at 9 a.m. and are limited to 30 people per climb. Ticket sales close at 4.25 p.m. It is 257 steps, or roughly 12 stories. There is a live webcam from the top of the lighthouse. The link is in the description box below. Now, this lighthouse is massive. It is very, very tall and uh, certainly a lot bigger than the Bodhi Island lighthouse that we were just in a little bit earlier today. It is the tallest lighthouse in the United States, second tallest in the world. The tallest lighthouse in the world is somewhere in Dubai, I think. Cape Hatteras Lighthouse also has an interesting story. The ocean around Cape Hatteras was known as the Graveyard of the Atlantic. With its shallow, shifting diamond shores, about 14 to 20 miles offshore. Some estimates say over 2,200 ships have sunk off of the Outer Banks. The lighthouse provides important navigation aid in a treacherous part of the coast. The first lighthouse was built in 1803 at 90 feet tall, but it was unable to effectively warn ships because it was too short. In 1853, the lighthouse board decided to add 60 feet to the height of the lighthouse, now 150 feet tall. The Confederate Army tried to destroy the lighthouse during the Civil War in 1861, but was stopped by the Union Army. The second lighthouse proved to be too expensive to maintain, so a new lighthouse was built that completed in 1870. This lighthouse sat 1,500 feet from the ocean and was 198 feet tall. In 1937, the lighthouse, along with two keeper buildings, were turned over to the National Park Service but the Coast Guard continues to operate it. Due to normal beach erosion and the westward migration of the Outer Banks, the ocean got as close as 50 feet of the lighthouse in 1980, despite many attempts to shore up the beach around it. After much study, debate, and discussions, the lighthouse and the associated buildings of the light station were moved 2,900 feet over 23 days to its current location in 1999. It is now 1,500 feet from the ocean, like it was when it was first constructed, with the support buildings exactly in the same relative position. There is a virtual tour of the lighthouse and a nice article on the move on the National Park Service website. I'll put a link in the description box below. Look at the beautiful coastline here. Uh, this is a beach at the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. Uh, you can park here, you can enjoy the beach, and uh, right here is approximately where the, old, the lighthouse used to be. They had to move it in 1999 because it was getting washed into the ocean because of the erosion. And uh, so they had to move it in 1999 over to its present location, just over that dune over there. And, uh, but you can come here and you know, there's a nice facilities park and just enjoy the beach right here. You can see a couple of people fishing here in the off season and it is absolutely gorgeous over here. The Ocracoke Light Station on Ocracoke Island greets the visitors to Ocracoke Inlet, the only reasonably navigable waterway for ships to inland ports. The lighthouse stands at 75 feet tall and is the second iteration of this lighthouse. The original was built in 1794 as a wooden tower, but was made obsolete as a channel shifted a mile away. 
It was destroyed by lightning in 1818. The current brick lighthouse was completed in 1823 at a cost of only $11,359. The lighthouse is not open to climbing, but the outside is open. Together with the Pea Island National Wildlife Refuge, there are plenty of wildlife to observe. Birds, especially during spring and fall migration season, are plentiful. Many species overwinter at Cape Hatteras. The Bodie Island Marsh Blind and the observation deck at Bodie Island Light Station are good places to observe birds. At Pea Island National Wildlife Refuge, the North Pond Wildlife Trail is a half mile walk that ends with a spectacular view of the pond. However, be sure to bring bug repellent as the place can be buggy. There are wild horses on Ocracoke Island, which is very well known. At the beach, there are nesting turtles, which should not be disturbed. The beach where there are turtle nesting activities are often closed. Cape Hatteras National Seashore has fantastic beach focused recreation, great collection of lighthouses, great bird watching, and quaint towns to explore. It is well worth the trip. Cape Hatteras, the Wright Brothers Memorial, Jockey's Ridge State Park, and Fort Raleigh make a great trip to the Outer Banks of North Carolina. We are on our way to visit all the national parks in the United States. Follow along by hitting the subscribe button below. Hit the notification bell so you know when a new video is released. Give it a thumbs up if you like this video and please share it with everybody that you know.